As consumers, we are bombarded by it at every turn like the Incredible Hulk being bombarded by gamma rays. But what makes some media endure, while others are banished to the forgotten black hole of obscurity, never to be heard from again? Who or what decides this? Hetero life mate Steve and Yehel want to know, and they want to know now. This is Obscurity Now. now, now, now. And what's up, Obscurians? It's time for another episode of Obscurity Now, the show that takes a look at weird and almost forgotten pieces of media, and then we decide if they should be tossed into the void of obscurity, never to be heard from again, or remembered for all of human history, or you think you remember it, but a shadowy government organization or something made it so you it never existed. Uh, my name is Steve. I'm one of the hosts. And with me in high school, he was known as the right here, right now, man. It's... It's Yehel. How are, uh, how are you doing, sir? Oh, good. I was, uh, I guess I failed. I was trying to make you laugh with that. I don't know. I'm pretty lame, oh, I guess. Oh, I, I don't find you funny, Steve. <laughs> well, yeah, we have a very contentious relationship here on Obscurity yeah, Now. I, I can't wait for the show to be over. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> when will that be? I mean, we weren't even canceled in one season, just like... Uh, we, we've out, we outlasted Nowhere Man. We did, uh, and the entire UPN network. Wow. It wasn't that difficult. <laughs> that, that's true. Which, which, I mean, after watching Nowhere, man, I'm going to say that's kind of sad. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like their dramas, uh, they have, I mean, Marker wasn't really that bad either. No. Uh, I remember The Sentinel being pretty decent. Um, Don't forget about Legend. Sweet, sweet Legend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sweet, sweet Legend was, wasn't bad. And, you know, Voyager <laughs> did well. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait. Is that called Sweet Sweet Legend, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, so that's the full name well, with Richard Dean Anderson, right? <laughs> that's the um, that's the uh, UPN After Dark version. Sweet Sweet <laughs> Legend, like, um, from the mind of Sir Mixalot. Yeah, <laughs> man, we still have that on the list. That, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, that's a really bizarre show from uh, UPN that we said we were going to cover someday, uh, but have yet to cover. But uh, today's show is uh, one uh, Nowhere Man, which um, was uh, from the uh, UPN network, which we just uh, referenced a few times, which was like a, I don't know, a big new network in uh, the 90s that uh, just didn't last very long and eventually sort of became like the CW or the WB yeah, or something like, like that. So WB and UPN started out around the same time. Right. They ended up, neither one did great. They ended up merging and becoming the CW, basically. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to know more about uh, UPN and another UPN show, make sure you check out our uh, Marker episode. I'm yeah. sure everybody well, remembers that For all you uh, Greco heads out there. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Greeks. <laughs> the Greco maniacs. Oh, the Greeks. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Greeks. Um, so, uh, what the, is the Greco-philiacs? No. Uh, <laughs> wow. Are there any left? I wonder. I mean, I, I, I could see his uh, fan base being called that in the nineties, but now I just wonder if there even is a fan base aside from you and me. <laughs> oh, Richard Greco is definitely his own biggest fan. Uh, I, I believe check it. out his music on YouTube. You'll regret it. Oh, is he, is he making new stuff or is this like old stuff? Uh, I can't remember how old it was when I looked it up, but I do remember. I don't think it was too recent, but also it was more recent than I would have expected. <laughs> I think like 2010 or something like that. Oh, that sounds like a uh, a watch along uh, coming up uh, for sure. Uh, a listen along, a uh, essential, sweet, sweet. <laughs> Greek, Greek along? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He did the theme song for Sil Silk Stockings Jr. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're back with Silk Stockings Jr. again. I, I love it. I love it. Um, so uh, what's your history with Nowhere Man? Well, I absolutely watched Nowhere Man uh, when it was airing live on UPN. Mm -hmm. I loved the show. I don't really remember remember anything about it like i mean while watching this episode at all like this episode definitely came back to me mm -hmm. but i don't remember like what ends up happening and and i feel like i feel like it ended on a cliffhanger the series and it never got picked up for season two so we never find out exactly what's going on or at least get it you know get it resolved but yeah i watched it live i, I really liked it uh this is the i remember this is my introduction to bruce greenwood who i actually really like as an actor mm, yeah. uh, what about you He's uh, really good, but uh, yeah, while watching this, I basically realized, I mean, I wasn't sure going in, but yeah, I'd never watched a full episode of Nowhere Man, like, ever. 
Uh, I remember it being uh, heavily advertised uh, in betwixt uh, commercials of a marker and legend and, and the Sentinel. Those and shows. Sparks and the Platypus Man. <laughs> I didn't watch. Etude after Platypus Man for Nowhere Man. <laughs> I don't think I watched those other ones, but I definitely watched uh, those uh, aforementioned ones. Do, and... do you think, like, at the end of Marker, if Marker was the lead, and they were like, hey, Greekophiliacs, don't go anywhere. <laughs> Oh man, that you know that would have bought the UPN at least five more years if they actually at had, least had the minimum. power of the Greekophiliacs behind them. Th- their mistake was not going all in on Greco. He should have been in every UPN show. <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, even uh, even we sort of disagreed with uh, some of his acting choices in in the Marker episode. Um, if anything, yeah, it would probably uh... make him crash and burn even faster. Uh, but uh, at Possibly. least. Uh, I mean, at least there was one season of The Nowhere Man, and I don't know why I never watched it, because it has all of the elements of a 90s show that I was into back then. Um, yeah. I don't know, maybe it's like soccer practice or something going on when it was on, um, and I just uh, couldn't make it uh, work at the time. Um, but uh, here we are in uh, 2023, Probably well, I wouldn't. We're we're definitely not the only podcast that uh, covered it because um, while I was uh, doing my digging, I definitely saw that uh, others have uh, have talked about uh, nowhere. How Man. dare they? I know, I know, right? They should have talked with us first. Uh, I mean, don't they know we're like we're the authority on these things? Um, but you said that um, that it ended on a cliffhanger, and that is definitely one thing that I uh, uncovered is that it did end on a, a cliffhanger, and. Um, as we're about to see when we get to the IMDb, I don't think we're ever going to get any answers because both the writer and the director have uh, passed off this mortal coil. And by that, well, maybe that's what they want us. To think. Holy! Sh- oh wait, am I even allowed to swear YouTube or you know? <laughs> or are you going to erase? <laughs> yeah, as long as you don't do it in the first eight seconds, you right. can swear. Are you going to erase my existence, Google, if I swear too much on my own podcast? Like, <laughs> I guess we'll uh, we'll find out. Um, but uh, why don't we? Uh, we'll jump into the uh, Obscuratron and get a little bit uh, deeper into uh, Nowhere Man. Welcome to your feature presentation. All right, uh, Nowhere Man, as we said, lasted one season, a total of 25 episodes, and ran from August 28, 1995 to May 20th, 1996. And uh, here's a synopsis. Thomas Vale is a documentary photographer who, in the course of one evening, seemingly has his whole existence erased. It appears as if some mysterious and powerful entity has coerced Vale's family and friends into cooperating in a clandestine plan to annul every trace of him. Vale is all alone with no option but to begin a desperate, dangerous quest to find out how and why this has happened, and most importantly, who is behind this torturous scheme. And uh, we are watching the pilot episode, which is called Absolute uh, Zero. Uh, I thought that was probably one of the best written synopsis we've gotten recently. (laughs) They've been pretty bad lately. Yeah, sure. But, uh, okay, so the director here... And this uh, blew my mind because I never knew he did. I knew he did like some sort of horror related uh, TV sort of one offs, like uh, anthologies and stuff. But I never mm-hmm. knew he did regular sort of like, I don't know, drama, like one hour TV dramas. And that director is Toby Hooper. Do you know who Toby Hooper is? Uh, no. He is the director of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, and its sequel, and uh, Life Force, Poltergeist, Invaders from Mars. Uh, like, yeah, he's a considered a, a master in the genre. And um, I mean, when I was uh, really into horror and in, in high school, I mean, not that I'm out of it or anything, but yeah, I pretty much uh, tracked down uh, his uh, filmography. And yeah, this. Uh, Really just uh, was quite the surprise, much like when we watched the uh, Sequest pilot, and that was uh, directed by, you know, um, the guy who did, like, RoboCop 2 and uh, this, uh, you know, Empire Strikes Back. Like, I just, just, you never know. <laughs> I, 
You know, Steve, I did not even remember that about Sequest, so it's like I got my mind blown twice. Whoa, well, that's, that's what Nowhere Man and this podcast is all about. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's, uh, I mean, pretty much everything on uh, Toby Hooper. Uh, sadly, he has passed on, much like the writer-creator of um, Nowhere Man here, and that is one Lawrence Herzog. And uh, he is known for, the, he writes a lot of uh, TV, uh, including the aforementioned Sequest. Here it's marked as a Sequest 2032. Uh, he also did the direct-to-video Darkman 2. Have you ever seen that movie? No. Uh, it's pretty bad, as, as one might assume. Uh, he did a few episodes of 24 and uh, The Profiler. Uh, you know Profiler, right? Yeah, 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 I remember that. Mm-hmm. Never watched it, though. Did you? <laughs> Yeah, I, I watched a few episodes here and there. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, wacky enough for us to review, but yeah, uh, but yeah, we'll it see. didn't seem like it. Seemed seemed kind of tame. Yeah. Uh, so um, the production companies here are Touchstone Pictures, and of course, it's distributed by the mighty UPN. That's United Paramount Network. Uh, so that does it for that. Uh, who are some of the thespians in Nowhere Man? Well, I'll get to the lead in a second here. I'm going to start with the supporting cast. Uh, playing uh, the part of Dave Eddie Powers is Ted Levine. Uh, it's weird because, like, I recognize his face, and um, but, but like, I had no idea who he was. But he's been in a bunch of stuff: Sons of the Lamb, Shutter Island Heat, uh, Wild Wild West. What? The, the which um, one? The movie or the show? The, the 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 movie he was general mcgrath oh wow i never knew that you know we might yeah. have to review that someday i've never actually watched it i've never watched it either <laughs> and, and and it did look pretty bananas i, I don't yeah, know why i didn't watch it for sure well um, <clears throat> uh because you're a racist that's why <laughs> that that's right uh, uh i was just gonna say ted levine also famously from psych did you ever watch psych yeah, yeah, yep. I love Psych. Yep, he was yeah, a really uh, good show. He was like the uh, the chief, I, I think. Oh, or... that's right. Okay. Wait. Okay. Wait, wow, I, I did not remember that at all. We should cover Psych one. Or wait. Although I don't know if it's really. Yeah, uh, I mean it's canceled. Are you lying to me? Were you lying to me? No, about no. Ted I'm. I'm career? I think Ted Levine might actually be from Monk. Actually, it's one of those Let's shows. See. They were both on USA. You know, he, he was never on Psych. But it was Monk. He was on Monk. All right. They were both on. He was. He was the Captain Leland Stottlemyre. There you go. Because the captain on Psych was a woman. So, yeah. All right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Continue. Anyway, this is all very interesting. It is. Uh, (laughs) Playing the part of Dr. Bellamy, we've got Michael Tucker. Uh, You don't know him from anywhere. Although he's (laughs) also done a bunch of stuff. Like, uh, I did see he had like 170-something episodes of a show called L.A. Law, which I've never watched. No. I'm sure it's a great police procedural. <laughs> right. Very exciting. Um, we've got uh, playing... I mean, those are kind of like the main of the supporting cast. There's mm-hmm. a lot of other like people that are just in a scene or two, so I'm not really going to cover them. But uh, we've got playing Allison Vale, the wife of Thomas Vale, uh, Megan Gallagher. Mm-hmm. Um, she's also been in quite a few things. Um, she was in the TV show Millennium for a while. Uh, she's done some movies, so she's she's got a little bit of everything. And much like Bruce Greenwood, Stephen, they have something in common. Uh oh, I wonder what it could possibly be. <laughs> so this may come as a shock to you, Steve, but she is a Star Trek alumni. She was uh, in a couple of episodes of DS Nine. She was also in one episode of Star Trek Voyager. And uh, do you know Bruce Greenwood, uh, who plays Thomasville, his uh, Star Trek lineage? Yes, I do. Uh, he played uh, Captain Pike, right, in the J.J. Abrams uh, Star Trek Very movie, good. the original. Yep. That's Steve. Yeah, he was uh, the third person to play Captain Pike and the second best at it, I would say. <laughs> All right, here it comes. <laughs> ah, oh, no. We have just entered another Star Trek connection. Ah. Uh, I think I deserve a little pat on the back for my Star Trek I knowledge did, there. Uh, good job, Steve. <laughs> very, very, very proud of you, Steve. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and yeah, that, that pretty much sums up the, the, the cast. I mean, Bruce Greenwood, is, it's funny because he's a guy who's been like in a ton of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like he's always popping up in movies, but he's never like the, the name, you know, he's never the marquee name, right. which to me is really weird that he never kind of like got that leading man status. Cause he's a great actor, good looking guy. Uh, you know, like it's very strange <laughs> to me that he gets so much work, but yet can never like be billed as like the draw. And, uh, watching this, like, man. Does he have not the best like '90s hair like going on? Yes, that's quintessential I, '90s hair. I'm gonna keep growing my hair out, and I'm gonna cosplay as Thomas Vale at the next San Diego Comic Con. <laughs> <And laughs> well, no you know, one... like those '90 haircuts are like popular with the kids now, oh, like the uh, that, that like, half length bullish cuts. Like right. they're they're back, baby. I mean, We're I'm, back. I mean, I'm already like getting pretty close. But... Yeah, yeah, you're almost there. <laughs> Just part it in the middle, and you'll be right there. <laughs> right, right, right. All right, and uh, that is the cast, Steve. So should we uh, get into Nowhere Man? Uh, yeah, let's uh, do it. By, by any chance, uh, I promised myself I was going to listen to it. But, okay, obviously, so we watched uh, the pilot, which I guess either they cut it off or didn't have, like, a, a theme at the time. Did you happen to remember or listen to the theme before jumping in no Bad me no. either all right <laughs> let's just I, I don't remember it I, I do remember it having an intro later on mm-hmm. uh, but i don't remember the the song or anything right like right that. i don't think there was anything significant i i do oh i do remember it being based on melodies whistled grunted by richard grieco <laughs> <laughs> the do you think they had hair offs like backstage, like Greco versus Greenwood? I think Greenwood wins. Greco yeah, he wins for, for sure. the marketer. And Greenwood he just... still has like a great head of hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, the aside from Star Trek, uh, did you happen to catch Bruce Greenwood on this? Like, it's like this Netflix, oh, it's sort of a horror movie, kind of based off of a Stephen King um, novel called like I don't know. It actually it sounds like a you know After Dark title. It's called like. I don't know, Victoria's Games or something like that. Did you happen to catch Gerald's that? Gerald's Game or something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, that's Gerald's Game. That's it. Yeah, did you see it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I saw that. That was good. I mean, of course, he wasn't the main draw, as you said. Of course not. Uh, but, yeah, but, yeah, it was a, it was a good movie. But basically, like, 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 man, like, Hollywood is, like, being held up by the back of Bruce Greenwood. Like, <laughs> he can play any part. Like, he somehow manages to, like, always look, like, perfect for the part. Mm-hmm. Even, it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. And it was put to the great performance. I, I don't get it. Yeah, me either. Well, where's, where's his Oscar? Well, that. Well, we're here to shine a light on the Bruce Greenwoods of the world. Uh, unlike this shadowy organization that's taking away uh, the light of one Thomas Vale. Yes. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So we start um, the the show where with these like still images. Uh, of mostly like war kind mm. of scenes, they're in black yeah. and white. Eventually, the camera pans out, and we see that we're at a at an art gallery for um, this photographer, Thomas Vale. Um, anyways, so they kind of like highlight one picture in particular, uh, titled "Hidden Agenda," mm-hmm. uh, black and white, 1994 dash negative press. <laughs> um, and and it's like I, I guess it was like some kind of execution or something that was. That he photographed, right? Um, we, anyway, so we see at this event that Thomas Vale, you know, he's like not. It, it's it's a very like hoity-toity, you know, kind of black tie event, you know, with a lot of uh, socialites, and he's very uncomfortable there. He's there wearing his you know, he, denim with his beautiful hair just, flowing. I was the... just gonna say that, yeah, he's wearing denim. You know, he can't wait for his next cigarette, Marlboro, please. Right, uh, and I have to say, like, this is, I would say, a very '90s trope. Uh, you know, the very kind of anti-establishment kind of lead guy, the artist, you know, who doesn't want anything yeah. to do with this corporate world. I, I'm just a photographer, man. You know, don't don't bug me with things like money and uh, success, man. I'm just all about the art. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he just, so he wants people just to look at his pictures, but he doesn't want to be there. You know, right. like women are coming up to him asking him questions and you know, he's being very uh, tr- trying to basically do whatever he can to make the conversations as short as possible. She, they're all like, what do you use for conditioner? <laughs> There's so much body and <laughs> not really. But uh, why? I'll no, just no, pretend no, but, but they, they but they should have asked. They him should that. have. Um, anyways, so uh, the conversation that he's having with a woman gets interrupted by the sound of breaking glass, mm-hmm. which kind of comes up again later. Um, 
in this episode. And I, I wonder if that's something that carries on throughout the series because it's not like it was indicative of something this time per se, but... Right, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, they just called attention to it and it was kind of awkward and then they never really had a call back, at least that I could tell for this one. There were other things that... Um kind of got reused as we will see as we as we talk through the episode right. um but yeah it's all part of the rich tapestry of a mystery that is nowhere man <laughs> yeah so uh anyways tom sees that his wife is having a conversation with some guy and i guess he can just like tell that she also doesn't want to have a conversation with him because he goes over there and he makes up an excuse about uh the babysitter called and something's wrong with little tommy um <laughs> he flips it up or something but so, so she like, oh, sorry, I got to go. But surprise, they don't actually have a kid. He was just trying to get her out of it. Uh, and he wants to leave because he's, he's too cool. He's got denim on. So, <laughs> Right. Denim and long <laughs> hair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So anyways, he like uh, promised to, her to like buy her a steak if they leave and cheesecake and mm-hmm. yada, yada. Anyways, eventually like they have some back and forth flirting and they, they end up leaving. Uh, but before they leave... Uh, <laughs> There's this scene where like Tom the Tom is talking to his best friend, I guess. Larry, yep. And uh they have like this weird conversation about so Larry wants to use like Tom's like notoriety to like get laid, basically. He's the atypical sleazy best friend. It's great. <laughs> he 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 reminded me of like George Costanza in um what's that Julia Roberts movie, uh where she's like the prostitute. Oh my god, Pretty I can't woman? Yeah, isn't doesn't he play a similar kind of character? You know, I don't think I've ever actually seen that all the way through, but uh, sure. I don't let's think I've seen it. it all the way through either, to be honest. <laughs> I don't really care for Julia Roberts, but uh, that's another podcast. Wow, yeah. wow hot take. Um, where was I? Okay, yeah, so it, the, the reason why I bring up the conversation, because it doesn't really matter, but uh, the his best friend Larry says something about, like, oh, it's either, uh, you know, find a woman here or the blow-up doll. It's, <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Oh, that's the old Howard Stern influence of the 90s seeping into yeah. uh, to media. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, Tom and Allison, you know, they, they they do sneak out and they go to dinner. They're sitting in a booth and they're surrounded, you know, by other patrons and they're they're eating their cheesecake and they're talking about their marriage and, mm-hmm. and how she's going to basically uh, have sex with Tom's them later. Lucky later. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, so they bring up Tom's uh, estranged mother and like how they have a bad relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, Tom, you know, like doesn't really like this discussion, so he kind of, so he says, "Hey, I'll be right back." He goes to the bathroom to uh, smoke a little cigarette in the in the boys' room. Yeah, it's so um, so weird. Well, I should say, all right, it's so weird watching someone smoke on you know TV or film in yeah. 2023 unless you're watching a K drama because <laughs> Koreans they don't care they they're just yeah. smoking smoking up a I don't know they're just smoking until they die storm yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> all right so um when Tom is done with his delicious cigarette uh, he leaves the bathroom uh, and now there's an elderly couple sitting in the booth where he and Allison were at and you know, the Allison's nowhere to be found. Um, he ends up like creating a bit of a scene. He's like talking to the manager who it's implied that he knows the manager. Well, mm-hmm. he knows him by name. He's like, Hey, where's Allison? He thinks it's like a joke and he starts to get mad. Cause it's gone too far. Long story short, he gets kicked out of the restaurant. Um, can I just say real quick that yeah. like, this is the most like a typical Italian restaurant you could uh, possibly imagine. Yeah, like, like the what, manager's name is Gino. Right, like why do they need a bouncer? Like, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, they. I mean, do they really have like that many you know outbursts at like this you know obviously high end Italian restaurant? I mean, if anyone was going to have uh, security, I assumed it would be the Olive Garden, but. Um, I don't know. I I think, I mean, there is a lot of uh, pulp elements like throughout uh, Nowhere Man, um, for sh- as we will yeah. see as we continue on. So, yeah, uh, Tom makes this big scene in the restaurant. Uh, he, like, even puts his hand on, like, the elderly couple, you know, so they kick him out. <laughs> he says something like, oh, you're a fine-looking elderly couple playing the part or whatever. You know, he yeah. thinks everyone's, like, he thinks Allison has, like, goaded everyone into, like, uh, playing this elaborate prank on him. Yeah. But, uh but like, why Anyways. would you put your hands on like the old lady or anyone really? But I mean, I get it. He's supposed to be unhinged. Well, he's not really unhinged yet, but he's getting there. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I guess, you know, like, the, the whole thing is, too, is, like, he he was already on edge from the discussion about his mom. Right. Uh, so he's just, he already, he came out of the bathroom, like, still in a bad mood, basically. Um. So, yeah, so Tom ends up, uh, you know, getting thrown out. He doesn't have the car. Allison took it. So he calls, um, he finds a payphone, another novelty to see being used, uh, calls his house, uh, presumably. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the, the phone's disconnected. And I do like that when he dialed it again, he did the classic 90s thing where you dial the phone number slower because, like, that's going to and harder because somehow <laughs> yeah. that'll make the call connect. There's another uh, uh, sort of thing involving a phone. Uh, but I'll say uh, the the lighting in the phone booth is one is really when I started to notice, like, the the cinematography of the mm-hmm. Nowhere Man pilot. I mean, it is it's really awesomely good. lit yeah i mean it's yeah. this yeah, there's is a few scenes where i made notes about, about the lighting yeah this is like one of those uh sort of tv things kind of like the uh briscoe county junior pilot where i wish it was in like full screen so i could you know watch it like a you know like a yeah, movie like wide screen. Yeah. yeah yeah um so uh tom uh ends up getting a cab uh, to his house, uh, but is when he gets to the door, his key won't open the door. Uh, Can I just jump in there real quick? Like, how old was that freaking cab? Oh yeah, yeah, it, it looked look, so uh, old. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, th- there's a few like old vehicles, and it's like later the truck at the end of it mm-hmm. uh, is like a very old looking truck too. Yeah, and it really just sort of brings up questions as to what he's actually sort of going through. But we'll save that to the end. Yeah. So anyways, his key won't work. You know, he's yelling for Allison to open the door and let him in. Eventually, Allison does open the door and she stares at him and she responds with, who are you? Um, And he's like, what? He's like, you know, this is he's shocked. He's like, hey, this isn't funny anymore. I'm cold. Let me in. Uh, Their dog comes up and even the dog (laughs) is in on it. The dog (laughs) starts growling at him. Right, right. Um, So uh, anyways, and then uh, a few moments later, uh, a big big man with a shotgun walks up behind Allison and shoots her. No. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> didn't see that coming. I even Close watched it. Off, yeah. 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 So he walks up behind her and he's like, uh, who are you? Uh, Tom, you know, tells this guy, asks this guy, who are you? And he says, I'm her husband. Dun, dun, dun. And he's like, yeah, hey, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to blow a hole in you if you don't get out of here. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Tom, you know, is like shocked. Eventually he leaves. Um, he goes to an ATM uh, he attempts to use this really cool looking ATM oh, in the yeah. 90s, uh, but the card doesn't work. Um, and the ATM tells him that his card has been confiscated and a video image has been taken of him. <laughs> this is the most advanced ATM of the 90s ever. I mean, has yeah. an ATM ever said that to you in your, uh, you know, 40 ish years on this earth? I mean, I do remember like. ATMs like some ATMs like talking mm-hmm. uh, in the 90s, so like that wasn't that unusual. But the whole this well, we've taken a video image, yeah. but you know, I <laughs> you know the whole point is that like, hey, this guy's being watched, right? Know, so. Exactly, exactly. And and it still makes sense in the story, right? Because they're basically like they're saying the ATM put puts up like some kind of message that said uh, he was an, uh, an unauthorized user or something, implying that like the card was stolen or something like that. So mm-hmm. it makes sense that they want to take a little picture of you. Plus, right. to get that hair. Of course, you got to have that hair. Okay, so um, it doesn't work. He ends up breaking into his own studio uh, because the key won't work there either. The lock's been changed. Mm -hmm. Uh, He notices that the hidden agenda photo from earlier is now missing. Mm -hmm. Um, So he has like a a dream in the uh, when he's in his studio where he like. He goes to, or he wakes well, before, up. Before before we get to the dream, like that's pretty much the end of the first act, I'd say. Like, what uh, what what were your thoughts at this point? Oh, I was just like, oh, I remember why I love this show. Yeah. Like, you know, the the first ten. Well, what I really like about this show, uh, and this is something that a lot of modern shows, at least like maybe if you're on a streaming service, you you, you could get away with it, but not so much on like network TV. Mm-hmm. Is a lot of shows they feel the need to like in the first episode catch you in the first few minutes you know like like really like reel you in yeah the cold open kind of deal Mm -hmm. yeah whereas this the first 15 minutes it's a very like just a husband and wife you know that are kind of going about their day basically you know right it's a nice uh slow burn and that way 
it really it really sort of catches you in the gut when he walks out of the bathroom and all of a sudden yeah. his wife is gone and you're just like wow what the hell is going on? Uh, well, and it's not just that his wife is gone. It's like the couple that's there is like halfway through dinner. Right. Yeah. 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 It's it, not like they just got like they just like got there and sat down and they have nothing in front of them. It's, it's like they're almost done eating. Yeah. It's so, really bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. It's great the way it's done. Uh, and I really like the way Bruce uh, Greenwood plays it up, too. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Uh, I assume that you also enjoyed the first act, it sounds like. Yeah. Uh, he's uh, fantastic. Um, I think he's like. He's sort of like the right at the right levels of kind of like you know freaking out and you know not going like too far. He saves that uh, for later. Um, and if it weren't for like the phone booths and stuff, this could really be you know this is a pretty almost timeless. I would say. Um, yeah, yeah. You could re- you could just change a couple things technology wise, mm-hmm. uh, like have him use a cell phone instead of a phone booth and. Oh. Right. Uh, yeah. Did you happen to notice that there is a uh, I don't know, it's some sort of Asian, possibly Korean show called Nowhere Man as well. I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, well, I had no idea, but I don't think it's the same premise. No, nah, no, it's not. And there's no Bruce Greenwood in it. So yeah, so can't. count us out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's like a little sequence here where like Bruce, uh, excuse me, Tom Vale wakes up and he's in his bed back home uh, with Allison next to him and he's like, Oh, you won't believe the dream I just had. And he like walks, pets a dog, splashes some water on his face. He's talking about the dream and he goes to turn his wife over. And this was really creepy. I did not remember this. When he turns her over, she like doesn't have a face. It's like just skin. Oh, like, yeah. No I, features. Yeah. And, then, and the, then her eyes open. Right, right. I thought it was better like without the eyes for some reason. Um, yeah, me too. But uh, have you seen the movie Society? Oh, yeah. I actually watched it uh, maybe like four months ago. Doesn't this feel like maybe a nod to that movie, which is also about paranoia and thinking that, you know, everyone's out to get you? Um, Yeah. I mean, I'm sure Toby Hooper was probably a fan of society. Yeah, Yeah. because that's like a great movie. Yeah, and I just, I was really surprised at that uh, bizarre dream. And I was like, yes, this is the show for me. (laughs) Uh, So anyways, Tom then wakes up again, but and he's still like in the studio. Mm -hmm. Um, The next morning, he ends up... uh, basically kidnapping Allison (laughs) Uh, by the hair. (laughs) Yeah. He like hides in the back of her car and Mm -hmm. grabs her. Uh, She's, you know, keeps saying that she doesn't know who he is, but she does eventually cave under like his constant questioning. Mm -hmm. Um, Don't forget and threat of violence and possibly other stuff. It was the implication. Yeah. 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 (laughs) He goes, uh, (laughs) Dennis Reynolds on her. Yeah. (laughs) Um, so uh, she explains that, you know, she's being watched and that they're making her do this and that they said that they would kill him if she didn't go along with it. Uh, a police car pulls them over and, uh, you know, she, he's like, she's like, uh, what should I do? He says, well, just go ahead and pull over. I doubt they, they've gotten to police, too. So at this point, he's like, how deep could this really even go? Like, right. Like some random police officer. Yeah, right. So um, and I guess like they really didn't get to the cop. Uh, yeah, so he was right about that. Yeah, that's an interesting thing about here is that, uh, or this show is that you really have no idea who's actually in on it or not, right. or what's going on. <laughs> yeah, for the most part. Yeah. Um, and uh, anyway, so you know they pull over, and the police officer is like, "Hey, we got reports about uh, a woman like possibly getting like uh, kidnapped. That there was a guy hiding in the back seat. Yada yada yada." So um, he's, you know, he tells uh, Tom Vale to get out the car and put his hands on the the hood, uh, and that the cop says this to Allison, and Tom is like, "Oh, there's a misunderstanding. She's my wife. Uh, mm-hmm. This is my wife. You know, blah blah blah." And so the cop's like, "Well, miss, you know," and she goes, "I don't know who this man is. I've never seen him before in my life." So she goes back to pretending, and like Tom, uh, and I like this, like Tom hits the cop, and and I was thinking, "Oh, I guess he's just gonna." you know, get out of it, you know, right. hit him and run away. But no, the cop, like, who's an older guy, punches him right back and then hit, starts hitting him with his baton and Tom is out. An older guy who's also wearing a baseball hat that says police. That says police. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really odd choice and didn't really feel kind of uh, authentic. I don't know why. I, don't... I mean, I've seen, I, I have seen that before, but uh, 
it's not common. No, yeah. No, maybe in the '90s it was. I don't know. <laughs> now, if it, that hat would have been backwards, then he would be a hip cop, and he'd be like, <laughs> "You go ahead, Bruce. Your hair is too good to to arrest. Your, your, your hair is too good to be caged." Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, anyways, uh, you know, he struggles with a cop. He gets arrested, and uh, next scene we see that Tom is now at the Callaway Psychiatric Hospital. Uh, there's a doctor there named Dr. Bellamy who's questioning him. And, and I should mention Tom at this point is in a straight jacket. Um, so Tom is, uh, excuse me, Dr. Bellamy takes a pencil from his hand, uh, excuse me, from his pocket and he drills a hole in to the end of a cigar, which is something that comes up again later. Mm-hmm. So that's why I bring that up here. He says, mind if I smoke, uh, which again comes up later. Right. Uh, I mean, I do like, Oh, go ahead. I was I do like Tom's reply where he goes, "No, mind if I leave?" Right. Like just his delivery like cracked me up. Classic, uh, you know, sort of action heroy dialogue almost yeah, yeah. Uh, for the '90s at least. And I'll say, so when you were seeing uh, Bruce getting interviewed by uh, by the cigar guy here, Doctor Bellamy, like, wasn't it? Did, isn't it just weird that they decided to go with like <laughs> cigar chomping businessman guy, like for the look of Dr. Bellamy instead of just like, you know, maybe more of a Ben Stein type. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, he just well, felt like a businessman. I mean, not that he's, well, he's bad. He's obviously like the administrator also. In right. The place. Right. I mean, so I get, so I think that's why he's in a suit, mm-hmm. uh, which that is not that I've been in too many psychiatric hospitals, but that that is common, you know, for the administrator to be a doctor and also, you know, wear a suit. So. Right. I mean, it didn't ruin it for me or anything. I just thought it was an odd choice. The, the cigar all. smoking. I mean, maybe it's a bit much, you know, uh, but, but uh, the, speaking of the lighting, I do like the lighting. Oh, uh, man. The asylum was so seat. crazy or psychiatric hospital, whatever you want to call it. It looked like it looked like they had rented out a church and then built it into the the hospital the and then there was kind o- of there was only one window with one stream of light and uh and on the wall when he was uh and that's i guess later when they when they go to like sort of the uh like the play area of the uh, mentally mm-hmm. challenged people i'm gonna make sure i use my uh my proper nomenclature here uh but uh but on the wall is like uh next to Dr. Bellamy is like this weird zigzag, uh, like wallpaper or poster. And mm-hmm. it just gave me a uh, big time David Lynch vibes. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and Hey, that's not a bad person to imitate if it was on purpose. Absolutely. So. Um, so anyways, they kind of have a back and forth. Tom is trying to, you know, convince him that of who he is. And Dr. Bellamy is like, are you sure you're not delusional? Um, so Tom ends up giving the doctor a list of people who can vouch for his identity and which it, he probably inadvertently like is, you know, hurting himself because oh, yeah. as we see later, you know, one of the people he gives them the name of is his friend Larry and we see, and he gives him Larry's address and later we see that Larry's dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, he also gives him like his, his mother's name and address and later we find out she had a stroke apparently the same day. That he gave this information. Ah, it's so, so crazy. I'm I'm already like freaking out about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyways, uh, Tom ends up like going to sleep in the next scene. He oh, I forgot to mention the thing that was most impressive about that scene. And I'm just wondering if you were thinking about this as well in the back of your mind as you're like, wow, he remembers phone numbers and addresses. I, yeah. Wow. I mean, I'm just like, man, that used to be I mean, me. <laughs> Until yeah, I used got to be a me too. Smartphone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like every, it's crazy. Like back in the day, for you youngins, like we all had to remember our phone numbers mm-hmm. and addresses. Uh, yeah. You know. Uh, so yeah, pretty. I mean, I, I think people still know their addresses, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> right. But like, do you know? Well, like I can't tell you my mom's complete address off the top of my head. Like you're I... as engaged a son as you are a father. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a really great guy. <laughs> Anyways, um, so move, moving on, uh, Tom wakes up. You know, he's still in the in the institution, and a fellow patient uh, introduces himself as Eddie. Uh, Eddie like starts saying basically like others. Tom will. Uh, so I'm sorry. Eddie seems uh, like he's very wise, and he like knows mm-hmm. about what's going on, or at least has some information. Um, 
Eddie warns Tom that the problem isn't the photograph. It's it's that Tom isn't the type of person who buys into the program. There's a lot of like weird kind of double speak like mm-hmm. that. Um, uh, Tom is like confident that the list of contacts he gave to Dr. Bellamy is going to result in his release. And Eddie responds that, you know, something like, don't you get it? You don't have any friends. Uh, everything that you thought you had, you you don't anymore. Absolute zero, which is where we get the title the, of the, the name of the episode. Yep. Uh, he tells Tom to ask uh, the doctor about Dave Powers, who uh, we find out later, Eddie is Dave Powers. Mm. All right, so he's done talking to mm-hmm. Eddie, and then the next day, um, Dr. Bellamy, he's arranged like a field trip. Uh, he's ba- he's basically in a van with Tom uh, and one of the orderlies that we saw earlier, mm. uh, and they're taking Tom to his studio. Uh, and when they get to the studio, it's funny because like... Uh, Tom's like, didn't I tell you they changed the lock? Like, my key won't work. Because I guess Tom is assuming that they're going to use his key. And he's like, and Dr. Bellamy's like, oh, that's where my years of experience come in handy. I called ahead. Yeah. And he just, like, opens the that door, funny. which I thought was pretty funny. It was. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, anyways, they walk inside. Uh, <clears throat> and everything's like, well, first day, they see, like, now there's a receptionist. And Tom's like, uh, this person, I don't know who she is. She, I didn't have anybody working here. Right. Uh, and the receptionist is like, I've never seen him before either, mm. you know. So, uh, anyways, they they walk around and uh, everything's kind of like been uh, some things have been rearranged. Um, the the photograph that he said was missing is still missing, um, you know. And this whole scene is basically like Doctor Bellamy trying to convince Tom that hey, maybe you are you know, just misremembering things. Maybe you really aren't who you think you right. are. And and he does a pretty good job of getting Tom to maybe kind of start questioning himself. Because mm. um, Tom is like, uh, well, I know where, this is my studio. I know where everything is. Like, in this closet, I keep my hazardous materials. He opens it up, and there's coffee in there mm-hmm. instead. Uh, there's, like, some other thing he checks on that's not there. And he's like, uh, and I like this because uh, Tom says, you know, well, I know what they didn't get. They didn't get the negative because I hid them in a place where you wouldn't expect, Mm -hmm. where they'd never be able to find it. He starts like reaching under a desk and there's nothing there. And the weird thing is when he's reaching under there, I'm like, it doesn't even look like you could hide negative anything there unless you like taped it under the desk. Right, right. I'm like, this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. And then later we find out that, you know, Dr. Bellamy is being played by Tom, actually. Yep. uh, Which is great. Mm, Sly dog. Um, Like, yeah, Bruce Greenwood had me feel uh, Because even at this point, I'm starting to think, oh, you know, it seems like Tom is really questioning who he is, but he never really actually is. Nope. Um, and there's a there's a little scene here, too, where Dr. Bellamy says something to the effect of, uh, you know, self-doubt or something like that it might be the beginning of your road to recovery. He says something. Right, is that like when that. he, like, grabs him by the shoulder and, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, so then we were back at Callaway, the institution, uh, Eddie's playing ping pong with another, uh, 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 prisoner. And, uh, I, I should mention like the, uh, the, I, I did find a synopsis line. I should give them credit on a website called sad geezers. <laughs> yeah. I think I might've borrowed a few of their images for the Obscuratron here. So, uh, thank you, sad geezer for helping yeah, us so be lazy. Guide me along. And, and one thing that they had in the write-up, which this must be something that we find out later uh, in future episodes, is that he, the writer here refers to the other patients as the erased. Oh, okay. Interesting. So basically, it says here, like, like Eddie's playing Pong with another of the erased. Uh, so it seems like maybe this entire institution is full of these kind of people. Right. Um, so, um, anyways, so we see that uh, Eddie repeats uh, pretty much verbatim the speech that Dr. Bellamy gave to him at the studio, mm-hmm. uh, which, you know, catches Tom's attention. So, Tom asks him for more information. How do you know these things? And blah, blah, blah. Eddie asks him, hey, did you ask uh, the Dr. Bellamy about Dave Powers? And Tom says, no, it didn't come up. Um, and, oh, one thing that I forgot to mention is that when they're in the studio, uh, Dr. Bellamy gets a phone call on his cell phone, and that must have been like a $30 phone call. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> back in right. Before. So you get the phone call on his cell phone, and he's like, uh-huh, yes, no, not yet, okay. Meet you at 10, you know, basically. So um, there's some kind of meeting at 10, and Tom overheard this, but then Eddie 
uh, tells uh, Tom, uh, why don't you, uh, aren't you curious as to who Dr. Bellamy is meeting at 10? So somehow, like, Eddie knows mm-hmm. about this meeting as well. I think uh, at this, maybe we can infer or speculate that maybe their tactics, they just, the, he, he knows everything that Dr. Bellamy is already doing because it's already happened to him. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah, it, it seems like for whatever reason, like, the organization's goal isn't to, like, kill, right. um, you know, Tom Vale. Uh, they actually want, I mean, they obviously like don't want him, you know, to be a part of regular society, but they still want him alive for whatever mm-hmm. reason. They want all these people alive yep. and their goal right now in the short term, at least is to make him think that he is crazy. Right. And that he's lost his mind. Indeed. Um, so anyways, the nurses comes around with like the medication for Eddie and Tom. Eddie takes his medication and grabs Tom's medication and takes that too and eats. So he swallows like all their medication um, and basically he's doing it so that Tom will be able to be alert right. later is the, is the whole idea. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and this is when, uh, what's his face? Eddie walks off and he gives like one of the other patients, like a little, a little tickle or whatever. Pillsbury. He like squeals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Pillsbury poke. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, it's later in the next scene, it's 10 o'clock and, um, Tom is kind of sneaking around and what does he see? Bellamy, Dr. Bellamy is meeting with Allison and they're laughing together right. over by Allison's car. Mm-hmm. And presumably, like Dr. Bellamy actually probably wants him to see this, is what I'm thinking. Right. Um, because again, their goal is to like make Eddie lose his mind. If it was just to capture him, they wouldn't have bothered taking him to that field trip to his studio to make him think he's losing his mind. Right, so, right. It's not a mind game. I really like the uh, music as he was sort of uh, sneaking through the, the hospital and, you know, following mm-hmm. uh, the doctor. Uh, I just thought it was a really interesting piece. Yeah, we haven't really talked about the music much, uh, maybe because it's more atmospheric mm-hmm. more often than, 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 than anything else. But uh, I do think it works uh really well. Oh yeah, it's it's really good. It's actually um the composer's name is uh, Mark Snow. If I'm not uh not the guy who wrote Informer, a Nicky Boom Boom Down. I was just going to make the same <laughs> joke. Uh but he did compose music for the X-Files. So there you go. Oh, that makes the sense. The 90s was his time. <laughs> so uh anyways, two orderlies end up catching Tom. They drag him back to bed and sedate him. Uh the next day uh, Tom goes to visit Eddie and Tom, uh, Eddie is just like kind of blabbing to himself. I can't remember exactly what he's saying, right. but you can, he's got like his head wrapped in a bandage. So some things obviously happened. Tom grabs, uh, Eddie's patient chart and on it, <laughs> this cracked me up. So it's like some kind of form, some kind of like form from this like medical form, right. but almost nothing on the form is like filled in. Right. And instead, there's like a big red stamp that stretches across diagonally across almost the entire page. And it says like uh, procedure lobotomy. Uh, well, something right. Like well, the lighting, lobotomy. the lighting was so dark, you hell, that they had to make it as big as possible so the camera would pick it up. <laughs> well, I mean, I was just going to say, I mean, I, this is clearly because it's the 90s. Mm. You know, we, there's no high death. Right. You know. This is uh, a lot of people would be watching this like over the air signals, which, you know, further degrades it. So you have to do stuff like this to make sure the audience can can see it. So, I mean, it's it's definitely forgivable. Uh, you know, it's yeah, it's just what they had to right. do. It's not going to ruin it for anyone. Um, right. Yeah. In modern day. Yeah. It looks a little silly. But uh, and then really cool the way they did this. He closes the chart and it's like one of those metal like little box mm-hmm. things. And as he closes the chart on the front of the chart, uh, the case, it says Eddie, excuse me, it says Dave, Eddie Powers. <laughs> so this was Dave Powers the whole time. Eddie's, uh, Dave's nickname was Eddie. What an odd nickname. Maybe it's his middle name. Yeah, maybe it was his middle yeah. name or something. I don't know. Um, but uh, anyways, um, so yeah, so he's had this lobotomy. Um, and uh, so... Tom escapes uh, by taking Dr. Bellamy. The the next scene is basically like Dr. Bellamy goes to Tom's room and Tom has actually off camera uh, captured one of the orderlies and tied them up Mm -hmm. and they're in his bed. This allows him to sneak up behind Dr. Bellamy and Tom has a syringe. Yeah, shades uh, of Terminator 2. 
yeah, full of chemicals mm. to that would I guess that's what they were using to to sedate him right. before. Uh, and he says something that he's got like sick. He put six times the amount that they've been giving him in the syringe. Right. So basically, he's like, I could kill you with this. Mm-hmm. Um, so he takes Bellamy hostage. Basically, he says, Hey, you're gonna escort me out of here, uh, and you're not gonna make a peep. So instead of at gunpoint, he's got him like at syringe point. Uh, so they go. Uh, B- Dr. Bellamy and Tom end up going back to Tom's studio. Uh, he's got Dr. Bellamy tied up on a chair. And, oh, I should mention, as he's getting into the car, he does stick the syringe, uh, Dr. Bellamy with the syringe. And I was uh, I was like, oh, shit, is he going to kill him? <laughs> uh, I mean, I wouldn't blame him at that point. Right. But, uh, but then we find out at the studio uh, that uh, it's been several hours because uh, Dr. Bellamy wakes up in the chair. Right. And he's like, don't worry, I didn't give you the whole syringe. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Tom's still a good guy Yep. Uh, for about three more minutes. <laughs> 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 then he becomes a killer. Uh, so, yeah, Tom is like basically taking uh, Dr. Bellamy's information, his IDs and uh, using, you know, pictures of himself that he has and making his own IDs. He's basically stealing Dr. Bellamy's identity. Right. I love, uh, it's like, well, I, I can feel the, um, you know, sort of the gears of the writer turning here. It's like, well, he's a photographer, so he must know how to make, you know, forgeries and fake IDs and stuff. Uh, so, yeah. so we as the audience have no choice but to buy it. <laughs> But to be fair, like back then in the 90s, like a lot of IDs were just laminated sure. paper, basically, <laughs> sure. you know, up, oh, it's laminated, let them in <laughs> like, no, but seriously, like in Florida, I remember until like 1990, you went by like the name of McLovin. 96. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, but you remember the old li- light driver's IDs? They were literally, it was a paper just laminated. Um, like there was nothing, there, there was nothing yeah, like, you're right. Uh, holographic or anything so mm-hmm. you could do what he's doing like and, and all he's doing is basically take cutting out a little picture of himself replacing it putting it over dr bellamy's he's you know unlaminating the the paper and then he just has a laminated then he just laminated it <laughs> I, love, I love how the answer to like make it official is laminating <laughs> that's <laughs> right <laughs> that's how i mean governments it, worked back then it, I, I mean like a lot most people didn't have laminators at home right. but it's not like they were like horribly expensive it might be a couple hundred bucks i, guess, I remember you, know? you could buy like a sh- like sheets i think from walmart and just sort of press them together yourself we had some of those yeah but uh anyway yeah yeah, yeah. With, with like an iron you, you could iron yeah there you go laminate. see anyone yeah. could be a forger at this point yeah oh the good old days <laughs> <laughs> um okay so uh anyway so tom is you know still trying to get information uh, but Dr. Bellamy is not really being very forthcoming other than telling him, you know, stuff like they're going to get you, they're following you, you can't like stop them. So Dr. Bellamy is in on it mm-hmm. basically. Um, and Dr. Bellamy says, you know, uh, I'd rather like die at your hands than like theirs. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so uh, he's not going to help him basically. And then, uh, Tom says, you know what this is right here? This bucket, uh, th- this pitcher or whatever. It's I can't remember what the chemical was, but something very flammable right. that's used like in uh, developing pictures. Mm-hmm. And he like dumps it all over <laughs> Dr. Bellamy. Uh, you know, he's basically threatening to uh, light uh, light him on fire. And I really like the lighting in this scene. There's like a green light from like the uh, the street that's like coming yeah, in, yeah, yeah, fl- flooding into the studio. It looks super cool. Mm. Uh, anyways, uh, then we see that, uh, the orderlies have arrived, uh, they're shooting the, the, the wall up or the windows up, uh, you know, dot Tom goes and dives and, uh, and then once the smoke clears, we see it's the orderlies and they all have like yeah, machine they guns now blow away this, uh, like a wall of windows and, uh, it's actually pretty awesome. It's, it really surprises you yeah. and comes out of nowhere. But the problem is like after the sort of smoke clears, they're just sort of standing around awkwardly. Like they weren't given like proper direction or, or maybe, maybe the idea is that, Hey, we're orderlies. We don't usually use machine guns. So we're just going to stand <laughs> around like awkwardly and not really know what to do. Um, I mean, I don't know. Like I could say at least for improving it, I would say we can assume that they've done this kind of work before. So maybe they could have sort of tactically, you know, made their way in. But instead, they just sort right. of stood around with their guns, like looking like idiots. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I, I think the idea is that the audience is supposed to like just because it is like a big surprise. Mm -hmm. I think the idea was to like have the audience give the audience a moment to like let it sink in that this happened. But it doesn't come off. Great. No, but I no, think no. that was the idea. Yeah. But it's, I, I totally agree with you. And, and the funny thing is, I actually the second half of this episode, because I was running sh sh short on time. I watched it today. I watched it at one and a quarter speed and, I, and it still felt uh -huh. long in that. Section <laughs> speed. Yeah. So, yeah, one. Uh, I mean, I guess one sort of negative for the show, I will say, is that the whole um, and I mean, let me know how you felt about it, is that I did felt feel that the plot dragged a bit when he was in the uh, the insane asylum or the, the hospital, basically. Did you? I mean, I, I could see it didn't feel that way to me. Mm -hmm. I could see it, but I just I, a little, you know, it all served. It all served the story. Sure. sure so sure, yeah, I mean, the one thing I guess I could have done without was the when they were playing ping pong, the guy that was singing. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I guess there's supposed to show us, hey, this man is mentally unwell. Right. Uh, but but it, it went on like a little. Yeah, long, I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, uh, the uh, orderlies eventually <laughs> make their way into the room right. uh, and Dr. Bellamy tells them to kill him. But instead, they shoot Dr. Bellamy. Yeah, that was a surprise, uh, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess Dr. Bellamy, you know, he failed in his job and uh, and they were ordered to take yep, him out, you know, or maybe they know that the he gave him some information. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So because even though Dr. Bellamy doesn't like help Tom and doesn't answer a lot of questions. He does give him a little bit of information, yep. uh, which is something I really like. like. Like everybody, like he gets a little bit from everybody. Like it's just like drip fed, but there isn't like some moment where somebody like does like five minutes of exposition. Right, because then the show would be over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And a lot of and I, one thing I do think I remember is that a lot of the people that are in on it don't know what's going on either. right right they were just threatened what I into too. playing their part in this whole uh... yeah. although i'm glad you bring that up because one of the things that dr bellamy tells uh him because because tom is asking him like hey how did you get my wife to agree to this mm. and dr bellamy is like don't you don't you get it like most people you know willingly agree to cooperate right. like we, we we don't even have to coerce them mm -hmm. uh now is he just saying that to like piss him off? Is he? Does that mean his wife went along with it willingly? You know, we don't really. You don't know. know. You can't trust anybody in nowhere, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, anyways, uh, Tom then, because <laughs> again, all this like uh, flammable fluid is everywhere, all over the floor, and the orderlies are walking near it. And as has been established several times, Tom is a smoker, and he was just smoking a second ago. Mm -hmm. Tom takes a cigarette. And he flicks it at the at the at the uh, liquid, and he burns them alive. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting uh, flashbacks to Spawn at this point, uh, or at least the opening of Spawn. Um, yeah, 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 for mm -hmm. sure. Um, so, anyways, uh, so Tom ends up running out of the building, and we get the classic '90s uh, shot of the building exploding behind oh, him, awesome. and he like leaps into the A air. Real explosion. It was pretty well done. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was pr pretty pretty good explosion, especially for a '90s UPN TV right. show. Right, and I'm you know I'm uh, I mean I can see what they or why this scene was here because I think maybe they even thought that well we spent all this time in the uh, in the hospital time to liven things up with yeah. a bang, and it's good. I, I think it was really well yeah, placed. For so. Sure. Then Tom goes uh, you know searching for people. He um, goes to Larry's apartment. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he, that's where he finds that Larry's like dead. There's like this weird thing where like, he thinks he's, Tom thinks that Larry's taking a shower <laughs> and so weird. there's like the shadow in there, uh, but instead it was just like, uh, like a coat on a hanger yeah. inside the shower. So somebody set it up to trick mm -hmm. him, I guess. Yeah, well, see, okay. So then he goes to the closet and he finds Larry's body. So yeah, I was really thinking about this. So it was like, so did Larry know someone was coming to get him? <laughs> And then put a code in there to to sort of throw him off and then ran to the closet himself and then they found him there and killed him or did yeah someone come in ahead of time and was like huh, we're gonna put one over on old thomas vale <laughs> quick give him the coat treatment well i'm pretty sure i feel like and i could be wrong that i remember larry is in on it and that's not really larry oh re oh in fact Hmm. I, th I think that's well, what ends up. I could well, be that's wrong. even more confusing. <laughs> so they stuffed someone else's Googled body it. in the closet and then. 
Well, I, I know. I think it's Larry uh-huh. in the closet. I just don't think he's dead. Was the thing? Oh, like, he's like made up to okay. look dead. Because because Tom never checks on him. He never like checks to see. He just like sees what looks like a dead body, and he doesn't like check for a pulse. Yeah, because he is kind of like cartoonishly blue, if I remember correctly. Right. Uh, he looks like a Borg <laughs> almost. <laughs> you and your Borgs. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, oh. yeah, it's either that or the other thing I was thinking is that may because earlier in a scene when Tom goes back to his studio the first time and he has to break into it, he sees Tom, excuse me, Larry drive away from the studio uh, or from the art exhibit with a woman mm. uh, in his car. And we do f- and le- Tom does find like women's underwear and clothes like strewn about the place. Yes. And she's nowhere to be found. He- he so like pick, maybe she killed he him. He like picks it up and examines him. He's like, nice. And I was like, is he going to put him in his pocket? But no, no. He's a real hero. <laughs> Smells he them. He drops them on the ground. <laughs> uh, one thing that I think is funny here is, um, sorry. So he finds um, you know, Larry dead in the closet. And then he calls. I guess he tries to find out where his mom is, right? He calls someone from Larry's. Is that what happens? Yeah. Well, did you notice that the phone he uses, it was like mounted on the wall. It is that classic 90s see-through phone where you can see all the like- Oh, I didn't, e- I didn't even like dawn. Oh, I rewinded it just to make sure that it was that That's phone. Awesome. Yeah. That's so Larry. <laughs> it's so 90s too. <laughs> Well, that's like that's like a phone that like teenagers in the 90s. I know, have. I know. And Larry's obviously a guy trying to be hip and cool. He's a little bit older, you know. He's like in his maybe early 40s, late 30s. So I'm just like, this is such a Larry. Larry is like, I know what'll impress the 20 year olds: the see through phone. Hey, you can see the transistors in this phone, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um. So as you mentioned, you know, he he's uh, Tom is looking for his mom. Uh, he find he goes to her house. And finds out uh, there's a nurse there that's like, who are you? And she's like, like, I'm her son. Mm -hmm. Why are you here? And she's like, don't you know? Your mom had a stroke six days ago. Yeah, I was like, no, they got to her too. Ah." Yeah, yeah. So he goes up to, she's in the house. The nurse is taking care of her. uh, Tom goes up to the bedroom where she's being kept. And she's like on like an assisted breathing machine Mm -hmm. and all kinds of stuff. Uh can uh, I just geez. say, uh, for those of you who are <laughs> Toby Hooper fans or fans of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like her house gave me major Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibes. Uh, just because it's, you know, it's like out in the middle of nowhere, like, you know, sort of country, almost uh, um, sort of like a Texas style house. And I was just like, hmm, I wonder if like that was like Toby Hooper's influence uh, on the Nowhere Man, basically. He's like, we got we to gotta get one of those uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre houses for uh, Tom's a mom here for some reason. But uh, I yeah, don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm seeing things that aren't there. Anyway. <laughs> well, either way, um, we, uh, you know, he's like t- trying to talk to his mom, but she's like passed out. Uh, at one point, she does say, Tom? Tom? Because he's like, hey, it's me, your son, mm-hmm. Tom. And she is kind of like saying, Tom, um, well, a cop shows up and he's like, cause I, I guess the nurse called the cop mm-hmm. and, uh, or he was being followed. We don't, I don't think it's really explained. Right. Uh, but the cop is like, Hey, uh, who are you? And he's like, Oh no, it's okay. I'm her son. And he's like, I'm going to need some identification. Uh, and he says he left it at his hotel room. So I guess he didn't bring his fake IDs with him. Right. I love how just, uh, he's like, I left it in my hotel room. He's so serious. I love it. Yeah, yeah, and because at this point, you know, like, like Tom is kind of, uh, well, not not losing. He's it, like, on the edge. Crazy, but he's on know, the edge. He, yeah, yeah, he he's feeling. He's definitely feeling stressed, yeah. <laughs> as anybody would. Yeah. Um. So, uh, but then you know, the mo- I think this is actually when the mom kind of starts saying Tom, Tom, mm-hmm. and uh, but uh, the cop like has pulled out a gun, uh, and then just as the, escal- the situation is escalating, a priest <laughs> shows up. <laughs> this is so random. <laughs> and he's like, um, hey, tell, tells the cop, hey, you don't have to do that. Like, you know, uh, it's fine. Let's talk it out. So uh, the priest is like talking to him. He says, well, that's a little weird that you're uh, her son, because in the last six weeks that I've known your mom, like she never mentioned you. And Tom is like, well, who are you? The usual priest from the church that the priest says is from is so and so. And he's like, oh, didn't you hear? He had a, he passed away. Uh, but weeks ago, I think like six weeks ago right. or something, they say. So he died a while ago. 
uh he and he says something like he had father whatever had a good heart but not a strong heart yeah it's like um, whoa whoa you're making uh you're making jokes here about the death of my priest over here, like spit, spitting bars yeah. over here uh, <laughs> but uh anyways so the, the the mom you know he's like trying to tell him no well this is my mom yada yada and then she's like tom tom and then the priest is like uh you know to the mom i think her name was helen or something mm. it's like helen uh this man is saying that he's your son and earlier, when way back at the beginning of the episode, when his wife and him are at, and Tom are at dinner, she's asking about his mom. Tom says that like his mom has disowned him right. because she feels that he abandoned her when he went to go pursue his dream, right. and that him leaving the house to go pursue his dream inspired. This is what the mom thinks inspired his dad to leave her. So she's like been all alone. Now. Right. So they they haven't talked. Like I, I, it's implied that they haven't talked in a very very mm. long time. So then the mom says, I have no son. My son is dead. Right. And this is great because we don't know if they've gotten to her, if she is, you know, just uh, pissed at him, or it, maybe she really did have a stroke as the nurse points out. Because he's like, Tom earlier is like, to the nurse, how did this happen? And the nurse is like, she's 73 years old. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was the, the, the delivery of that line was really good. And uh, yeah, they're really. Um, the crazy thing here is like this is I mean we've basically gone through the Rolodex that he gave Dr. Bellamy at the beginning of like all the people that can vouch for his identity. His mom is like the last bastion of hope and now she throws right. him under the bus and it's like uh, it's like devastating. Yeah, yeah, basically. Um so anyways, so now at this point the cop is like uh yeah, you're coming with me. You're under arrest. You know, like nobody believes that he's the son now. Uh, he uh, Tom grabs a vase uh, that was like right next to him and like basically like throws it at the cop's head, uh, knocks him out, mm. uh, takes his gun. And I liked that he didn't he wasn't able to just get the gun out immediately out of the holster. Like he had to like really kind of wrestle with it yep. a little bit. It was very realistic. Mm -hmm. uh, and I bet it was like a mistake. I bet that's not what they were supposed to do, but it looked so good. I'm sure you know, Toby was like, hey, use, we're, we're going to use that. That's good that you struggle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it plays into him being unhinged and not smooth because at this point, this is the most unhinged we've seen mm -hmm. him. He takes the nurse as a hostage, holds a gun to her head. He's like, I'm getting out of here. If any of you, like, you know, come after me, yada, yada, you know, I'll kill her. So he gets outside. He shoots the tires out of the cop Very car. Smart. I love that. There's a lot of little things like that that he does. Yeah. Like when he's getting when he's breaking out of the uh, the insane asylum, he makes the the Dr. Bellamy close the door behind him because he's got that guy tied up in there. Uh, so there's a lot of little nice. things like this throughout the very, very few plot holes. Here. I agree. Um, anyways, Tom uh, drives off. Uh, and I think this is, he's still using Dr. Bellamy's car and the car ends up dying on him mm -hmm. like in the middle of like rural Iowa, like literally uh, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he ends up like at this uh, this giant cross road section, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm sure is supposed to, you know, be a metaphor for him being at a crossroads. Right. But like before that, we've get, got some awesome just like wide shots of him like a walking and it's just like oh, yeah, completely yeah. quiet. And uh, you get like major uh, Incredible Hulk vibes, at least from the 70s TV show, you know, where they always show David Banner walking with his backpack, you know, like at the, uh, at yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. end. And, yeah. Um, and yeah, just... And it's it's super windy. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just this great sort of... They make you feel as isolated as he is. It, it's awesome. I love yeah, it. Yeah, and the music here is really, really, like, if I remember, it's like just kind of like an... I don't, I don't know how to describe it, ominous sounds yeah, more yeah. than like Very music. Like it's, it's really good. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, uh, he goes and he ends up like finding somewhere to sit, like a post. He sits down and he's just basically waiting for a car to drive by mm -hmm. to try and hitch a ride. A lone pickup truck does eventually uh, pull up and it's like a weird looking older car as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and this makes me wonder if like the cab was, you know, one of this organization's cabs right. too. Uh, so this old this this guy pulls up, offers him a lift. Tom accepts uh, as he's going to get his bag. And I should mention in the bag he's got. I can't believe I forgot to mention this. The last time Tom went back to his studio, he got the negatives, and they were actually in a different location hidden. Right, right. So at that point, like Tom had figured out basically that Bellamy was probably in on it. Mm -hmm. 
um, and that he couldn't trust him. And so, you know, at this point, like Tom wanted Dr. Bellamy to think that he maybe was being successful, yep. basically, uh, which is just great because it shows you like how smart Tom yep. is and how much he's planning ahead. And it always makes you wonder about what Tom is doing yeah. and his motives and reasons for doing it. It's great. But, like, it's so weird because you have no idea what's going on in this show. It totally yet works. It doesn't feel like you're being uh, taken advantage of by the right. No, no, like we didn't know he was going to, you know, tie up an orderly and put it in his bed so he could, you know, fool uh, Dr. Bellamy. Uh, they Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. It's a surprise to the mm-hmm. audience, too. It's great. Yeah. Um, so uh, anyways, he, he got the negatives, presumably of that photo, the hidden agenda right. photo. And that's one of the things in his bag. Um, anyway, so he's carrying this. So he goes to pick up his bag. And as he's about to get into the pickup truck, he notices that the driver pulls out a cigar. And then he starts drilling into the end with a pencil, just like Dr. Bellamy did. Uh, and you can see like Thomas is, is like, what the hell is going on here? Right. And then... Uh, Doctor, uh, this guy in the pickup truck, he, I can't remember the line I should have now, but he quotes a line that Dr. Bellamy said earlier, yeah. verbatim, like word Yeah, for it word. was like the one where he was like holding his shoulder, I think, perhaps, maybe that line. Um, I can't really remember it either, but. Well, at first he says, do you m- mind if I smoke a cig- mind right. if I smoke, just, like just like the Dr. same Bellamy. way that he said it earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, so he says it just like Dr. Bellamy. So he, yeah, he does like three things that are just like Dr. Bellamy. Um, so Tom you know, he doesn't say anything, but he doesn't get in the car. So the, the the guy's like, okay, well, you don't want the ride, you know, should have accepted if you knew what was good for you. Um, and he's like, you know, you're going to be out here. It's gonna be a long afternoon for you. Uh, and he drives off. And then we see that Tom is just literally left at this crossroads, uh, not knowing where to go, what to do. And there's this awesome shot like that seems to go on forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I want to say the shot at the end lasts like a minute. And it's just like all this, all you hear is like all this wind. Um, the camera even shakes sometimes. It's yeah, so I was going to say it's either a, um, it's a helicopter shot or they could. No, I, ha- I think it's a crane. I was going to say they be, could be on a cherry picker or a crane. And yeah, it starts wobbling. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's got to be a cherry picker or a crane because when I watched it, first I watched it like at one and a quarter speed. Like you can really tell the camera shakes a lot mm-hmm. then. And then I went back and I watched it like at the regular speed and it's not as noticeable, but yeah, it's, I, I think it's on a crane cause a helicopter it wouldn't have moved that much. But yeah, it was just an awesome, like chilling ending, just slowly panning back this massive wide shot. And yeah, he's just sitting alone at the crossroads where, uh, with nowhere, he doesn't know where to go or who to trust or what's going on. Just like us, the audience. And, uh, yeah, yep. just good stuff. Awesome cinematography that you would not expect from a tv show in the 90s yeah and uh i did look up to see if larry is in any other episodes and he is in another episode he's in two episodes so that that makes uh that reminds me that guy in the pickup truck he really reminded me i'm I'm sure it's not him but he remind you know the uh the adult that runs the Hey Dude Ranch and Hey Dude with the glasses. Yes, it yes. looks just like him. Just like him. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, good call. I wonder if it's him actually. Yeah. Um, I should have. Uh, I'll, I'll check on that while we discuss here. But yeah, Steve, are you ready to uh, render? Uh, yeah. The verdict. Let's do it. Okay. All right, uh, you hell. Uh, do you think that Nowhere Man should be remembered for uh, all of human history or uh, erased by the government, never to be heard from again? Um, I say uh, it should be remembered. Uh, this was better than I remembered. And I, I, and I remembered really liking it. But, you know, I'm sure a lot of stuff just I didn't notice or pay as much attention to as a kid or whatever. But. Man, I, I, the, the whole series we should mention is on YouTube. Um, I believe someone has actually uploaded it like as one file, like, like one video, one long video. But I also saw that there's a, the episodes are there like separately you, and it did come out on DVD. Yeah. I was going to say, is it the DVD transfers or like kind of what we watched? I, I, I don't know. I didn't look at the other ones. Cause um, yeah, I mean, but by the way, Steve. You know why that guy reminded you of Mr. Ernst from Hey Dude? Is it him? He is oh, Mr. Ernst wow, from Hey Dude. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Hey Dude connection. I can't believe it. 
<laughs> that guy, I've only seen him in one other thing, and that's like an episode of Seinfeld where he was only on uh, uh, on screen for like five, ten, like five yeah, minutes yeah. or something. That's so random. Wow. He's been in a bunch of stuff, actually. Yeah. Uh, What's his name? Yeah, he's been in tons of stuff. Uh, his name is David Brisbane. David Brit. Wow, I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm glad you brought it up because I was just like, man, he looks so familiar. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't quite uh, remember what he was uh, in. So uh, he was also in a movie with uh, Aaron Brockovich with your your favorite actress, <laughs> Julia Roberts. <laughs> oh, man, you know. Uh, but yeah, anyway, sorry, Steve. I think you were about to, to give your verdict. Oh, I mean, did you deliver your final verdict? Oh, yeah, I said keep okay, it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I I, 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 I I know I say this a lot, but uh, I think this time I am going to go and watch uh, the, the other 25 episodes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, this was totally, this was intriguing, like, all the way up until, like, the very last frame. Uh, I can't believe uh, Toby Hooper directed this, and the cinematography is awesome. The acting is great. I mean, I wish I would have watched it back then, but, uh, hey, I guess that's why we do this podcast so we can find you know new uh, hidden gems or old hidden gems to dust off yeah. and check out and i mean my the only disappointing thing is uh when i found out that it left on a cliffhanger like uh is there if if anyone who's like a what would you call like a nowhere man fan um <laughs> a somewhere man i don't know a uh <laughs> Like if you're a um, a Stan, <laughs> what if that's the what if that's the name? Of, what was going to be the name of the series finale if they had done it somewhere, man? Oh, that would be super <laughs> lame. No, nowhere Stan. If you're a nowhere Stan, and you know if there's like maybe there's uh, scripts on the internet that tells uh, what happened, or um, you know definitely because that's the one um, sort of downside is that. You know, if you and I do go back and watch it, we're not going to have any answers by the end. I mean, we might have some, but we won't have all of them. But uh, but no, no, this was uh, fantastic. So because of all of that, uh, Nowhere Man. Yeah, shall... I, I mean, oh, you know what? I do remember. Oh, my God. I just got a, fl- a sudden hit. <laughs> of. I'll, I'll wait till you're done with your verdict. OK, so. I was just going to say I was going to say you remembered and run the, the the thing. So, yeah, the bumper. Yeah. Yeah. In accordance to Obscure to Now, the most important streaming YouTube podcast in all of the internet, you shall be remembered. Yes. Good show. Good, good show. So what is this buried memory that uh, resurfaced just now? So I... I, and again, I could be misremembering uh, because, you know, I haven't, I haven't watched in a long time. But I think it's possible spoilers uh, <laughs> is that Thomas Vale doesn't really exist. Oh, wow. I think is revealed at some point. One of those. Things. Um, yeah. Um, I, I, I distinctly remember. Well, I was going to ask, uh, doesn't act- like, if you wanted to speculate because, uh. The weird thing is that, okay, so these agents or people that are involved with the conspiracy or the cover-up, or they all do and say the same thing. So is that like programming? Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. This, so this, is, I, this is suddenly coming back to me. Okay. So the reason why they don't want to kill uh, Thomas Vale is that they're I, – I think I remember reading this right – that they are basically running – like uh, mind control experiments, uh-huh. uh, no fake memories okay. experiments or something like that, uh, where like and that's why they don't want to kill him. Uh, but like it's actually Thomas Vale was the fake life basically. Oh, so it's like Total Recall. Um, yeah, yeah, kind of uh, like. Okay, that. got it. Yeah, so I, I do remember that happening. Um, uh, what else? Uh, I, I I I want. I feel like that's like revealed pretty early on maybe like even halfway through season one or something mm-hmm. I, I i feel like there were a lot of episodes where we knew he was not like thomas Vale wasn't a real person mm-hmm. or something um interesting but uh that's why and that's why everyone there uh at the insane asylum is called the erased uh because like they've had like their fake memories erased or something i or maybe it's the real memories i can't remember but um how it works but uh yeah, I, I, I do remember that. Well, we'll uh, 
have to, if we get if we both get caught up and like actually finish it, maybe we can do a, a follow up episode or something. But um, yeah, you know what uh, movies like Society and shows like Nowhere Man remind me of? Uh, My audio drama Ray can't sleep. Oh yeah, <laughs> duo. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'll, um, I'll run the trailer for that. Yes, uh, I uh, wrote and produced an audio drama called uh, Ray Can't Sleep about a, a guy who hasn't slept in uh, months and, uh, yeah, unearthed a, a big-time conspiracy. But uh, Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That, sorry, I can't believe I didn't make that connection. <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. Um, sorry, my, my mind has just been so blown by nowhere, man. Oh, and uh, yeah. I, 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 I feel like at some point, he has like a twin or a clone or so, so there's somebody pretending to be him that looks either a lot like him or or maybe it is like a mm-hmm. duplicate of him or something like I, I do remember something like that happening. So do you uh, so did you watch the entire series when it came out? I think so. I'm pretty sure I did because I mean, I was I was like addicted to that show. Do you feel that they I just don't remember? It. <laughs> right. Well, hey, we're uh, we're getting up there, old chum. Uh but yeah. uh I mean, do you feel like they had an actual direction or is it like lost where they were just sort of BSing their way through it? No, no, no. I remember like it feeling like you're like they have a plan. Okay. Well, that's uh, good. And the way I remember it is that yeah, new questions keep coming up, but you also do get answers. Oh, that's good. Uh, are getting answers throughout the series to like previous questions. So it's it's not like a modern mystery box, you know, kind of a a, a thing. Right, right. Well, all right then. Because I mean, think about it. I mean, we we do. I you know what? Let me see if I'm remembering <laughs> this. Thomas Field doesn't exist. Well, while he looks that up, uh, I forgot to mention at the top of the show that. We are coming up on 100 episodes, um, so if you're just like a regular podcast listener, not that there's anything wrong with that, uh, <laughs> you should head on over to... If you're one of the erased, yeah, as we refer you, to you. you. You should head on over to YouTube and subscribe <laughs> so we can hit 500 subscribers. That way we can celebrate two milestones. That's right, 100 shows and 500 subs, uh, but even if that doesn't happen we're still going to have a great 100th episode as soon as we figure out what we're going to do for it yeah uh and i did confirm thomas vale does not actually exist (laughs) Uh, i was right about that i love how matter of factly you delivered that it's like film at 11 (laughs) thomas vale does not actually exist (laughs) and uh yeah it was fake memories uh, there's like a government pro- program and they're testing their fake memories uh, on on him. Hmm. So uh, interesting. Interesting. All right. Well, anything else? So I'm going to stop reading this website because uh, <laughs> they're going to it's going to blow it all for you. Spoil it all for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think it's worth watching, even though it doesn't have like a, a true uh, ending. So. Sure. I mean, it's, um, it's fun. I, I like Twin Peaks doesn't have a real ending either. So uh, so there you go. Um, yeah. so yeah, nowhere man's great. Um, and, uh, you should definitely check it out. Who knows? If there's a big enough uproar. Well, like since the original creators are dead. I mean, I don't know. I guess Paramount probably still owns the rights, right? So who knows? They, they can bring it back somehow. I mean, as long as Bruce Greenwood is still alive, nowhere man will never die. Yeah, I could see I could see this being rebooted where maybe he's uh, you know plays a bad guy, right? Time. And they have some uh, since he's older, right? Some new they'll put Zendaya as uh, as Thomas Fail, right? But I mean, you could literally like do this show, like this episode at least, with the exact same script. All you have to do is change a couple technology things like we talked about, um, and it's pretty much like perfect. Like there's nothing you have to change, really. I agree. It's uh, it's really a shame that this didn't last longer, but uh, hey, that's yeah, well. I'm glad you finally got to watch it and enjoy it. I knew you would like it. I was just gonna say that that's life in TV networks in the '90s, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But uh, all right. Well, um, that's our show. Make sure you uh, join us uh, next Sunday as we continue to unearth more obscure media only on. Security now. We'll see you next week. My name is Ray, and I can't sleep. What happens when you try to 
sleep. I feel like I'm dreaming, but I'm awake and I can't move. I think you were sleepwalking. You emptied your pocket, sat back down, and went back to sleep. There were some rough looking characters on the bus, so I grabbed. You've been enjoying Obscurity Now, a podcast that's recorded live to tape and streamed to Twitch and YouTube. Subscribe so you never miss an episode or hilarious quip. Take us with you by following the download links provided in the show notes to wherever you get podcasts. And take notice of our various social media links. If that's what you're into, I'm not here to judge. And make sure you join us live next week at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific as we continue to discuss more obscure media only on Obscurity Obscurity Now. Now.